So what is UX sketching? I find sketching an effective way to communicate all of my design concepts and allowing the team members and myself to iterate on different ideas before settling on the final one. What's really good about UX sketching is you don't need to be an artist. And no one from your team needs to have an art degree to participate in UX sketching. Trust me on this. If you can draw the visual alphabet, then you are ready for UX sketching. Okay, so let's give it a go together. So first thing when you're sketching for UX, it's very important to decide what kind of device or browser you're going to use. So we have three different versions, desktop, tablet, and a smartphone. Let's just sketch out all of them. So what's really important here is you keep the aspect ratio. So this is our desktop. And if you want to represent a Mac, or you might just place three dots here. And if you want to represent a Windows computer, then you just add the cross in the corner. You can represent the tablet in a portrait or landscape mode. I know this is not what the iPad looks like, but this is how I usually represent the tablet in the landscape version. So this is the previous tablet. This is the portrait version. And on a smartphone, what you want to do, you just keep the ratio smaller. And maybe this is your camera. And what if this is a landscape? So we have three different viewports here. Now one of the other common components when you're sketching or when you're wireframing your website or an application is your navigation. So we have three different navigation structures, horizontal, vertical, and one for mobile. So let's just do a horizontal one. I'm just going to sketch a desktop and then I like to stay on a Mac. Our navigation is basically just a logo here and then just adding some lines as navigation items. So let's do the vertical one. If you're going to do a slider menu, then your menu can actually come from the left or from the right. So something like this or another version would be I'm just going to use another color here like this. It's very simple. Okay, for your mobile, either it's coming from the right or from the left. Just add the line here. And this is my navigation items. And I just like to shade this other part out basically represents that this part is an overlay. There are common elements when it comes to UX sketching. So let's just have a look at them. So it's very common to have a header. How I usually represent the header is basically I draw a rectangle and I add the logo here and some nav items here or you can have a little bit different header. You can put your logo here and add some navigation items here. You might actually want to include um, maybe a button here. The next common component when you're sketching is a title. If you're using pen and paper, then I would just recommend to use a Sharpie where you can actually draw like a thicker line. So that's how I would represent my title. And while we are doing the title, then we need another component, which is the body copy or paragraph. And instead of a thick line, I usually just add these kind of lines. So the next common component is an image. As we already saw that in the header, I usually represent my image like this. If you're thinking about adding or representing a carousel, then what I usually do is basically I just sketch this image. I add some icons here and I represent the carousels not only with these elements, but I also add these dots here. The next common component when it comes to wireframing and sketching is buttons. Like to use rectangles for a button or you can use like an oval kind of shape for a button or you might have icon buttons 
or you might have text button you know like a link text button for the buttons and whenever actually you would like to frame a text or a label then i would recommend to put the text down first for example we just do button and then we add the frame around the text i see a lot of people doing the frame first and then they add the text in it so but see what can happen subscribe so i cannot actually fit the whole text in so text first and framing after you might want to include button groups as well so it's very simple just like that other things that are important form elements what are your form elements those are basically your input fields tangle and you have a label here you can have a form element with a leading icon or you can have a form element with a tailing icon it might be also your combo box your drop down and then this is your drop down something like that other important form elements are the checkboxes and radio buttons the checkboxes it's just a square and another square another square you might want to put some lines next to it and this is your checked checkbox your radio buttons are circles then when something is selected then you just add another dot here i like to add a little bit of shadow here like this so that's how you pimp your checkbox another form element is your text area these little lines represent that this text area is expandable and i might include a scroll bar here as well speaking of scroll bar you can have this kind of scroll bar or like this and some miscellaneous how should i pronounce it miscellaneous and some random items that you usually need to include in your sketches just call them misc so for example pagination how do you represent pagination this is a rectangle and it has a beginning and an end some arrows so you can just step through and we have number one here number two and something and something and this is 99 let's say very bad pagination but this is how you can represent it and maybe with another color or just adding a little shade here so you know that this is actually selected so the user is on page number two controls that you might want to include maybe like a toggle so this is on and off other controls like a slider it's very simple play button pause button you might want to include a video in your sketches the video player might have a slider as well other elements you might need is a progress bar which is you can represent it so many ways maybe like that kind of looks like a bucket if you think about it <laughs> or like this And just shade it in and just give it a percentage here another element that you frequently need is um, messaging a banner message or toast message so let's just do a toast once you have your basic things done then maybe you just want to have a toast here and let's say this is a success message to do this is an icon body copy and this is your toast message you might want to represent tabs again this is just a rectangle tab 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 and maybe this is the selected one you underline it or you shade it in that's also nice kind of like this next is your model that you might need frequently you just draw your browser window and then add the model on top of it which has a title thick line body copy maybe you want to include some buttons here and definitely a close icon and you can shade this one out if you want it to yeah so that's your basic model if you're working on a pricing page or an e-commerce website 
then you probably would use a lot of cards there. How I usually do my cards, again, I have a rectangle here. I have an image. Maybe I have a title here. I have some body copy. Then I have a button. And then I just do the same next to it. And maybe you actually want to draw attention to one of them. So you either just draw this one a little bit larger or you can add a border around it with a different color, like what I did here. And finally, if you do some kind of lists, either it's a bullet list or number list, then you just do it like this. These are your bullet points. If it's a number list, it's very similar. Just one, two, three, and then a line. And there you have it. So this is how you sketch for user experience design. You might have seen one of my videos about Crazy 8 and Crazy 4. If you haven't, make sure you check it out. Thanks for joining me today. I see you next time. Bye.